Welcome again to another episode of Agency Life. My name is Clodagh Higgins and today I have, well we say the better half, we won't say the better half, of another agency couple which I seem to be attracting left, right and centre uh, in my line of work which I love. We have Boyd by Done By Friday, DBF and over 10 years ago, he won't tell me how long, he sat at his kitchen table with his wife Sonia and they came up with this idea from his direct marketing background, her corporate marketing background, to create their own agency that is just booming right down in New Zealand, 25 years over a percent, 25 percent increase year on year, which I am just dying to hear about how the hell did you do that? Welcome Boyd again <laughs> thank, thank you, to a call with me <laughs> um, yes. how, tell me more about this story from a kitchen table um i guess it's like a lot of agents a lot of people who spin out of uh agencies larger agencies where they they get just get sick of the turn of the agencies and um and obviously economic downturns, you know, they, 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 they change the structure of agencies really quickly. So you can have yeah. one day you can be employed and the account goes and the next day you're out. Um, so we're sort of just tired of that. And so we decided to go freelancing. Um, we were both freelancing and then we decided, well, we're both freelancing. This could be a business, uh, probably better structured as a business. So we sort of just stumbled into it. And before we knew it, we we're starting to pick up clients. And I guess when we started, it was very early and digital and, and, and people were really looking for people who had digital experience. So the agency grew uh, reasonably strongly for the first few years. And then we got a couple of big corporate breaks. And, and yeah, we went, we went pretty big, pretty quick. Amazing. You went through a, a significant uh, challenge at the time, which I think might be coming back around to you. How did you differentiate yourself when everyone is digital? So yeah, right? I mean, that's, uh, yeah, exactly. Like we were in the early days, we, um, we were it. There weren't any other digital, we, you know, yeah. I'm talking 2002, there yeah. weren't any other digital agencies around and we rocked it, right? And it was yeah. really easy because we were the digital guys. And then, you know, then more competition appeared and, um, and some went past us because they, they had technical resource and we decided not to do technical resource, we decided to say very, very creatively led. Mm -hmm. um, and then everyone went digital. Like you, you try and find an agency today that isn't digital. It's not, it's not a question you ask. It's just yeah. like, I'm looking for an agency that does this stuff. Yeah. And, and so I guess we, we didn't eat our own dog food on this stuff. You know, we allowed, yeah. we just, we didn't do any over our marketing. We didn't do our own thinking. We just sort of plotted along going, Hey, we're good guys. People want to employ us. Yeah. And um, at the end of the day, if you've got aspirations beyond, you know, just creating a job for yourself, um, then that doesn't cut it. And and so we we tried a couple of things. We 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 I went and did a, we did a tech startup, <laughs> and um, it went really well. We got a lot of investment, but we you know eighty percent don't make it, and we we're in that eighty percent. Yeah. Um, and so we went back to the agency, and you know things were starting to look pretty grim would use the agency to fund the tech startup right and uh and then uh we we did it we got an external consultant to come in and do a review um they gave us three options of one which was content marketing right and we look back at our we look back at the work we'd done in the past and it seemed to be an exact fit and so we decided to we decided to to focus on content marketing um and then i went looking for software to support that and um we had decided that there was a lot of pain in just being with one platform um, because we'd built a lot of big shit. Um, yeah. We'd built e-commerce platforms. We'd built um, multi, multi um, uh, global sites. Um, so we knew how to do tech. Um, and we just went, oh, we just, but we're sick of it. So, and HubSpot seemed like a good, a good place to be. Um, well supported. Um, um, we could do that. We could do most of the work, work ourselves and yeah, yeah. the way we went. 2014 that was right yeah 2014 yeah which nobody had heard of inbound down in, Aust in australia or new zealand we yeah. had i was supporting you from hubspot because they hadn't even opened their offices down there so yeah. you know you went you were like number two or three as an agency coming on board was that right you were very very yeah. early on 
we were very on. I think we were, there were only there were only a couple of other partners, and and if you look today, two of those are just one man bands, and they're gone. So wow. there was only one other one other partner, and they were based uh, they were based down in Christchurch, um, and so we you know we decided we one thing we did I think which was important when we set up we decided what we wanted to be. Yeah, you know we would we'd be nothing, and so we we went we if we're going to do this, this is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to be the leaders. Yeah. Um, we're, and, 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 and we did that. So, yeah. so we decided we're going to do leaders and then we, we actually did some planning to say, well, therefore what would, what would be, what would leadership look like? Um, so what will we have to achieve? And, and we, it wasn't just about being a good HubSpot partner. Uh, it was a bunch of other things that went along with, with leadership and, yeah. and that's about educating the market. Um, you know, um, giving back to the community, um, building a, you know, building a culture for, for excellence. Amazing. Um, yeah. So we did all, it, it, it's not just one thing. It was a whole bunch of things and it's not just HubSpot, right? It's got to start, it's got to start with some, um, you know, some, some good solid marketing thinking. Yeah. It's, it's got to have that background as well. So today, like you would have been very early on in the piece. So are you feeling yet that, that everyone is digital feeling that you had, you know, 10, however many years ago are you getting that feeling now that you start to need to differentiate yourself from when people are starting to talk about inbound or has that not hit yet uh you know that that's hitting i mean the other thing i think there's two sides to that first of all you know we live in an inbound bubble right so well we think that's the case um there's a huge amount of businesses out there that are yet to to take on an inbound approach and, and, yeah. and, and everybody has experience, everybody in, uh, who's on this podcast probably has experienced the, the feeling when you go and see someone, they go, Oh yeah, you can do it like that. And it, the sales really easy. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so I still think there's still plenty of opportunity, but, but it is becoming more crowded. You know, when we, I did, I've done some research lately on the market down here and um, you know, in Australia, there's 114 HubSpot agencies listed in the, in the, in the directory. And, and if we look, we know we started, there was three and now there's 26 wow. in New Zealand. So yeah, there's been a lot of growth. So, and I, you know, I giving away. So yeah, there is some thinking there that we've been doing around that. Yeah. And, um, uh, I'm not going to give away all of our secrets, No. Nope. But, um, <laughs> but, um, you know, what differentiates an inbound agency and, and Hub, HubSpot want to say that, you know, you can specialize in real estate and or whatever. And, yeah. and, and potentially you can, um, but also there's other ways to differentiate beyond industry sector, right? So funny. That's a recurring theme. I think it's been mentioned like three or four times now on, on this podcast alone. And it's a, it's a conversation I pretty much have uh, within the first few conversations of when I'm working with agencies about this pressure to pick a niche. And yeah. the niche attitude is industry or geography it's kind of like two things as opposed to the personality of a person the size of their budget their ability to make a decision quickly their ability to be responsive (laughs) you you can actually pick some personality traits and workability as long as they budget and the time to do it um niche niche is definitely way more around personality sometimes as as well as you know, real estate, do you even like real estate? You know, you've got to remember if you're working with these people, you're going to be talking about it all the time, working with them. Are you yeah. interested in that? You may as well pick something you're interested in. Yeah. So I, I, th- I, I think that it's pretty late location and um, location is pretty lazy, right? Yeah. It's just, just, just saying uh, we, Today, we, we, yeah. we, we're happy to settle for what we've got in our lot. And, and, and if you compete on location, you're always going to be open to, mm-hmm. to someone setting up beside you and, you know, doing things a little bit differently or having yeah. a better reputation. So I don't think that's a good, I don't think that's a good differentiator. And then the other key differentiator you see is the knowledge of the founders. Oh yeah, we came out of this or, you know, I came out of corporate or I came out of that, you know, and I think that's, that's a weak differentiator as well, right? <laughs> because there's always someone who can come up with something shinier than you are. Right. So, so I think my f- experience and feelings are that those are the natural things you gravitate towards. And, and I gr- agree with what you're saying. You've got to think 
you've got to think beyond that. Mm -hmm. Um, and and I think there's some good. I think when you start to go out there, there's some really interesting ground out there. Yeah. And and when you find that thing that's right for you, that you know you just go and decide to be that and be that leader, and you'll make it right because that's you've right. decided and you put yeah. yourself in that position. It'll happen. Put your hat on it. 100. First yeah. and 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 don't take the easy options like your your background, yeah. ringing your mates and your location because you can visit them. Too lazy. Yeah. Too easy. I totally agree. Now, you yeah. you wouldn't allude to this when I asked you some questions before this interview, but uh, tell me the relationship came first when it came to yourself yeah. and Sonia working in the business. Tell me about that story. Um, we've got a really good story about how we met, which we usually tell around a dinner table with friends. <laughs> so, Would you like um, to pour a glass of wine? Oh, no, hang on. Yeah, it's yeah, first yeah. thing in the morning for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I won't go into that. Um, <laughs> but it's nice to say that the, um, uh, the, relationship was there. the relationship was there first and it, and it, and it, wasn't, it wasn't through a working relationship. Yeah. Um, so we... Um, uh, it's really interesting. Sonia's got Sonia's was a did a phys ed degree, mm -hmm. and so she was a and um, and for a while she, she was a Rovers instructor, <laughs> right? Um, oh. And 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 I and and I started when I left school. I was a boat builder because I had dyslexia, and yeah. I and, and so um, I was always frust creatively frustrated. Right. And and Sonia was Sonia was incredibly intelligent and smart, and just decided to go to university and do something she she loved. Yeah. Um, so I think we both got to a point where we found our true, our true place yeah. and what we wanted to do and what we're passionate about. And, and, um, and, and, and look out, it's an, you know, we, when people say, why did you call your name done by Friday? And it's because I'm Friday and Sonia's done. Right. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, Cloda, she is, uh, She's just, a, a, when it comes to getting, you know, project managing, um, developing yeah. strategy and, 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 and nailing that stuff, yeah. she's just so far ahead. Um, and, and so I think that that's how it, we, we didn't probably realise that when we first started to work together. Yeah. Um, and, but it's been, it's been behind our success um, ever, since, ever since we did. Cool. What were one of the challenges that you experienced when you were going from that transition of, not working together to owning a business together. What what were some of the the, the hiccups that you overcame? Um, I think I think that it's a good interesting question. So I'm sorry if I'm stumbling over. It. No, not at all. Look, 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 I, I mean, in in being the Friday, right? I'm I'm the I'm the business. I'm the rainmaker. I go yeah. out and I. And I make things, and so um, Sonia's only as good as Sonia's only as good as what I produce. Right. So and you brief to her and explain. Yeah. To her. Yep. So so you know if I pick up a dud client and I you know I push a dud client into the business, um, you know that upsets that that used to you know it used to cause her, she used to have to work double hard to 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 do that and make that happen. Right. And and but and now when we're scaling up, you know we've we're closing in over eighteen people. Um, we've got a situation where if I do that now, I'm not just affecting Sonia and, and therefore getting a bit of grief at home. Yeah. Um, I'm affecting a whole bunch of people. Right. So um, I think I think the teething problem there is is seeing your strength and also seeing your weaknesses. Yeah. And and realizing that hey, well, you can charge off out and you know be really strong and in, in areas you're strong in. Um, you also need to consider that those weaknesses have an impact. And, and, and that, that impact can come home, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think you know as well that um, when there's more than just the two of you, in the beginning, of course, you're going to bring in a deal, mm, might not be the best, which, by the way, is every agency owner. They do that. They go, oh, I didn't really like that person. I have a dodgy feeling about them, but we need the revenue. It's all good. But when it's you and her, you know the things to say to her. You have a personal relationship with her going, I'm going to bring this deal in. I'm going to get a bit of flack, but I'm going to take it and I'm going to handle it. And then I'll take her out for dinner at the weekend. It'll be grand, right? You can do yes. that. You can't do that. You can't keep the whole office happy. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, no. you're going to be mental. So when the more people come in, 
then yes, you're right. There is a, a process then to go, okay, hang on. I can't just placate one person and now transpose that out to everyone. Is that then something that would have helped you? You said you had a, an aha moment recently about you used to have a flat structure and now you don't. So was that one of the things where it's like, these are your roles, this, these are her roles. Was that something that, that kind of helped um, in that new structure that you're talking about? Um, I don't know specific. I think that that's an ongoing, I think that's an ongoing thing, yeah. but, um, the, the structure, the, the structure is definitely meant that we have to be far more disciplined on that. And, right. and we have to agree, which we have to agree, which clients and, and I've still bringing in some dud ones and the guy and, and it's not just Sonia now and they, you know, I'm getting rightly, so I'm getting a bit of grief about it. Right. Um, and, and so I need to, I need to, um, to step up and and uh, and and do and do that stuff, but the structure thing was really we were struggling with growth mm -hmm. and we couldn't see we I guess we couldn't see we I guess we just didn't think we were big we we're getting big but we we were we just didn't see it it was yeah. crazy it was it was right in front of us we didn't see it right and so um, we took we, we we suddenly went well when we get to the size we're going to have to change things um but that so that's a really hard process to do first time it's crazy you know you think you think you look at corporates and say oh look they you know look how fast we can move but but yeah it took months to get to, to actually embed it properly and that's because we and we we um somewhere in the business we gave them a um we promoted them into that role. And so they had to exit their, they were trying to exit their own role as we we're trying to put in the new structure and the new structure came with its teething problems around, around it. So yeah, right. but now we're, there, now we're there, we don't think twice about it and we go, yeah. wow. Well, and it's given us a lot, it given us, it's given us a lot of courage to put other similar roles in place. Amazing. So you were flat with how many people yeah. and how many you're flat? I think we're running about nine or 10 when we, when we decided to go from. Right. But you thought from, you needed to be what, 20? Did you, did you yeah, think? Yeah, I, 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 guess, I guess we had this thing where you just run flat and all of a sudden one day you're 20 people and you've got the structure. I didn't, I didn't think we thought about the change. I didn't think we'd thought about the change management, that the change and how you manage that change. Yeah. Uh, and now we have, we've got a learning there that, hey, you know, there's got to be, there's got to be a plan and and you've got to bring everybody along the plan and then you've also got to be flexible right that things yeah. may drop back but your, your aim is to continue to continue to drive through so that's a great tip and you said you wish you'd done it a year earlier is it's kind of um, there you felt I, or at least earlier than you than you actually yeah did. i think we thought about it quite we thought about it for three months right mm -hmm. we should have just done it you know the, the thinking about it just wasted time <laughs> um, we should have just sat down and go, it's going to work like this, so we put it in place and go for it. Yeah. Um, sure. But I, I was worried about, you know, I was worried about, oh, the extra cost in it. And uh, mm -hmm. so, and I think as a small business, you know, you, you spend a lot of time, but, you know, because the money's coming out of your pocket. Yeah, it's it's not like you're not making a plan with someone else's money. And so you think about, oh, the extra cost in it. Where, whereas I think these days I try and focus on, you know, if I feel strongly that that is the right thing to do and it's going to get us ahead, then just do it. Don't right. the, the the financial gain if you've got a good plan is always going to be greater than the financial cost that you're going to go through in the short term. That's incredible advice. And um, one of the things that I you you say like so you have your small hiccups of taking on clients. Um but there's a bigger mistake that you made um in the past. I'd love you to share a bit more about that and maybe we can prevent other agency owners going through that where you took on a big brand client um and you were thinking that uh the money would be great. Tell us more a little bit about what happened in that beginning initial stages. Uh, specifically like when did you actually go oh, this isn't a good idea but ignored that and kept going <laughs> yeah it's really interesting like we've worked for blue trip clients before right um, yeah. a lot in the past <clears throat> and we, we we know how to we know how to manage and handle them um they're really interesting like because 
um, you're one of many agencies, you, you know, whereas we typically work, we're the main agency in the mix. Um, when you get into those bigger corporates, you're one of many agencies, yeah. um, big marketing teams, and you don't know all the marketing people. So there's a lot of complexity in there um, in, the, in the relationship management. And we picked up one, we picked up one and they're, you know, massive. Um, and the potential, the potential was maybe a million dollar account. And, and so we, you know, that's, that's encouraging. So not to be we started. Out. Nope. Not to be sniffed at. No. So we started. We started to chase it down, and and the people we're working with were very um, entrepreneurial and, and 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 wanted and wanted to go ahead. And meantime, back in the rest of the business, there's this very traditional, slow approach. Approach. Right. And of course, what happens typically is the um, the corporate doesn't like the entrepreneurs <laughs> um, because they 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 feel uneasy and at risk and, and slowly that 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 culture started to push our entrepreneurs out and so we were left with this business and and, and I was feeling like my natural inclination is to double down hey let's we've got this relationship it's a little harder than it used to be let's work a little harder right and right. um and and we'll come out the other side and you know I'll, I'll, I'll realize that potential but the reality the reality is and if you're really honest with yourself, the reality is, is that never actually really eventuates, yeah. right? Because right. those, old, those old corporates, they dig in um, and there's, there's traditional agencies are really good at managing that, those old stayed relationships and you're yeah. going gonna to get spat out, right? Yeah. So, um, and I can't claim we came to this all by ourselves because we have a, we have a business um, coach uh, or advisor, I have a business yes. advisor, and uh, he's been around the he's been around the thing, and he said just get rid of them. Yeah, <laughs> and and, um, and I, I didn't quite do that, but what I did is I changed my attitude to them. Gosh. I went, we're not going to invest in these guys. We're going to yeah. milk them. So we're going to sit them on the side. Um, we're not going to pander to them. If they decide not to do project, not to do work with us, I don't care because right. I've already ex I, and mentally and we've already ex exited what we want to do with them it's it's on our so we put it on our terms yeah and um and that just made it a lot easier to handle it's just like so when they did decide to take a chunk of work away and put it back into the mothership um we just went oh fuck them you know we're, off, we're off. <laughs> no big deal <laughs> yeah no big deal we, yeah. we've i've already i've already filled it with three other i'd already gone out and filled it with three other other accounts you know so Fantastic. um i think that i think i think it's a i think it's a it's a mental shift you have to make to yeah. go you have little guys that are not good for your business. You can quit them easy. They don't mean a lot. You have big guys that have a bigger impact. Look, don't, don't go up and get that big account. Yeah. Or if you do wrap it around some wrap it around really solid, if you can really solid um, um, agreement. Yeah. And then be prepared, be prepared to don't get all angsty if they want to exit, just tell them to go. Yeah. <laughs> or, or even, in sort of in between that is to do, you know, you want to work with the big guys, but pick a small project, yes. test, test them. Yeah. Can they respond on time? What's their purchase order? Do they pay on time? Who signs yeah. off what? What's their calendar? Just do, you know, an email campaign or do um, an event campaign with the view that you, you are going to work in the future, but only really if things work out because you can get yeah. to know them. Once you start working, that's when, the, the kind of masks come off and you realize these guys are slow and why are they asking 15 questions on one email and why are they taking two weeks to approve content um, and yeah. smaller pieces is, is you want the big piece of business and it's so easy to jump in but cut it down do a small project 90 days six weeks um and and sort of in court each other <laughs> if you like yeah. um figure well, we've got another out. we've got another corporate and you know we took that very approach, nice. and now and now we were we, you know, they're a, they're a billion a billion dollar listed um, company, and um, they we started on the, on the consumer side. They're now taking us into the small business side. You know the relationship is is slowly growing. The trust is building. Amazing. Um, and and you know and. The, once and you can see that they've got loyal, you know, they've got loyal, they're loyal to their agency. So we can see that as we build our relationship, we're in there, it's solid. So mm -hmm. that, you know, that, that approach is good.
That's awesome. What are you excited about down there um, in New Zealand? What's kind of like, obviously, to, five, so it's five years ago you took on HubSpot. You're obviously clearly, yeah. you know, excited about that opportunity. Then it went from inbound marketing, inbound sales. Now we have the services. We've got chatbots. We've got AI. Yeah. We've got all this stuff. What's the kind of thing that you're pretty passionate about getting your teeth into for the next year? Um, I guess I guess it's not so much HubSpot now, right? For us, it's like we've got a we've got a we've got a quite a big business, yeah. And um, we're looking at we're looking. This is this is a growing market. It's a growing ecosystem. Yeah. So I think there's opp- there's opportunity to think about how how that's going to shake out and and what role and what role you want to play in. And play mm. in that so i guess there's a lots of ingredients there hubspot's changing as you've you pointed out and you know they're growing in different areas and different expertise um there's more agencies around you know and so so there's a lot to think about and and so we've done a lot of work to evaluate the market evaluate hubspot and where it's going though though they're pretty thin on the ground on on on, on any on, on, on any, um, Sonia tried to jump in and say hello to you. <laughs> Tell her we can do that in a second. <laughs> yeah. Drop um, her slack, we'll do that in a second. <laughs> cool. Um, and so I think, I, uh, um, I think it's about um, you understanding all of those inputs in that environment and right. plotting, uh, plotting our course through that for, for success. And that'll be different for every agency. Yeah. Um, about, you know, it's, it's about where you are, how big you are, you know, what you're good at. And, 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 but I think the important thing there is that, yeah, shit's changing. Oh my God. But, yeah. but, but have a, have a plan. Right? right. Don't just go, yeah, we're the best in, in this location and we do marketing and sales therefore that's our brand and we're going to make good of that i think that's good enough yeah um it's about saying well in three years time the market's going to shift towards this um where do what do i want my place to be and therefore what do i have to do to um to be in that to be in that place Right. Well, if you, if you were to think about, uh, you know, it's so true. It's like uh, the amount of things I've seen just in the last few weeks that I had not seen before. And I'm going, um, it's like, it's phenomenal. I, I, I think that the growth stack is the one I'm quite interested in. Like if you think five years ago on average, what, how many pieces of software were you recommending to a client? Um, I know every client is different, but on average now, like kind of give us a couple of names that are in your common growth stack as you go around recommending. Has Drift hit the, hit the scene down there yet or no. not yet? For conversational marketing, um, just seeing some great stuff out of them. In fact, I was at a conference recently and a guy from Drift put up where they're going with conversational marketing. And one of the things they're doing is actually testing a website that is a bot. So... Mm. You log in and it goes, do you want this? Do you want that? It actually feeds the website to you in a series mm. of <laughs> conversations. Cool. I'd like to see that. I know, right? I'll get, you, I'll get you the deck. I'll send it over to you. But it was like, oh, okay. So I don't know about you. I'm always looking for the bot on a thing now. I'm yeah. like, give me the answer. Give me the answer because we're all so impatient. But yeah, that was the kind of, you're here. What are you looking for? None of your homepage, none of your, well, I want pricing. Why do you want pricing? You want this. So um, yeah. really interesting stuff. So from it comes to a growth stack from kind of what are some of the things that are you offering that are, are, are at the moment? I'd love to hear. Yeah. I mean, one thing that we're working quite closely on is it with a, with a, uh, a connect partner yes. um, called um, Cradle. Hmm, and they okay. they provide they they're a bit like airtime is it airtime they provide um, a, a, a phone service nice. so a plug-in phone service so what it does is it replaces all of the te- they can go through and either take the telephone numbers or replace all the telephone numbers in your social media and your and your website and then when the calls come in they identify the telephone numbers drop it back into HubSpot, and then when the call comes in, you can see who the call's coming coming from, so you can see all the details. Can I do that with my mobile phone? Yes. Oh my 
yeah yeah that's the end of us talking to each other now what about my calls to my mom like what are we going to (laughs) do yeah exactly you can automate those put a vote on her hi mom yes i'm okay (laughs) yes everything's all right thank you i love you bye bye (laughs) can i give it a script (laughs) probably yeah 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 imagine yeah yeah How's your relationship? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, do that yeah, one. Great. Oh, great, mom. Everything's fabulous. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cradle. Interesting for phone numbers. Yeah. That's cool. I haven't heard of that. So the, 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 the really interesting thing about it, though, is that um, clients focus a lot on how many leads came through the website and how many did we convert, right? They're, they're like, and if, obsessed with it. Obsessed with it. Meanwhile, there's all these telephone calls. That, that you don't know dry, what happened on them. You don't know what happened. So, um, and if you look at a website, if you look at a, a, a user, um, you know, a, a large percent, maybe 30, 40% will come in and pick up, the, pick up the phone and not fill out that form. So there's all this focus on... On, um, on making the phone on, ring what? and then we don't know what happens. We don't know what happens. So we've done, we, we've, been yeah. working with these guys, we've been working with these guys and we've been going through looking at the telephone numbers that are not uh, that have come only could have only come from the website got it that that are unidentified as a customer or an existing prospect right and then we've gone back and looked at after the call came in what actually happened to the call and did it actually connect up to become a lead so we're starting to look at the ability of actually tracking telephone calls into the into the lead and and acquiring those as well that and is also a phenomenal tool yeah and also looking at how many calls got dropped and never got picked up again so there's some interesting stats in there right so brilliant potentially 20 percent of your leads are going to come through the phone yeah from, as a result of your as a result of your inbound campaigns so uh-huh. if, yeah. if the customer's going, I don't really think you're, you know, you're only breaking even here. I'm not really happy with, I'm not, you know, I, I, it's not really making enough money. Oh, but you haven't found, you haven't counted all the phone calls. Um, and then I think, you know, to the customer, it goes, hey, we're generating all this traffic and you guys are, you guys are dropping these, you guys are not picking up these, these phone calls. What's the story? We're doing the, we're doing the work and you're not, you're not, you're not actioning it. So that is good, an really incredible cool stuff. tool. I, there was one, there's um, an, an agency I've been working with in the UK and they work with dentists and we were having this exact conversation. It was like, they, it was, we didn't know if the phone was being picked up. We didn't know what was being said and also if there's a bad day and they forget to do things that like you know oh there's one day there's a load of calls but they're not filling in a form uh like great okay i'm going to put that down on the list that's fantastic oh. um also, and i'm going to have a look at drift and you've heard drift i'll send you some oh, i'll send you some really cool like great yeah. great conversation stuff but definitely one to look for that's like that's like me giving you a tip from the future <laughs> because they're only just coming over here to Europe in the last few kind of months. We're getting a lot of traction and they're doing some UK events. So you know what it's like. They'll all be down. Yeah. They'll be down. They'll be down yonder no, in, in no time, but you'll be ahead of the game. So cool. <laughs> all good. Um, love that. One of the things that I love to ask agency couples, if they have any tips on separating work and life, like have you any rituals? I was on, I had Remington Beg on the call the other day. Uh, he was talking about how he calls his wife when he leaves the agency. She doesn't work in it. She works for the agency, but she's not in the office. So he calls her and whatever 20 minute it is to get there, that's the work talk. And if the work talk isn't finished, he sits in the car until the work talk is finished. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> and then he'll de- de- decompress, he'll gather himself, and then he'll walk in the door as a husband and a father. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, Remington, he's an extremist, yeah. love him to be. So any tips or you can share or how, how do you guys kind of cope with the, the sort of dynamic between you? Yeah, I, I think the, I think the most important thing that we've learned is don't do the same job. Like if you, if you're both creative or, you know, if you're both account service, I don't. I didn't. I don't think I've ever seen an agency six work off that model. Right? I'm sorry, because you're gonna you're gonna knock heads on it. 
Yeah, always. Like that's the most important thing is to know what your roles and responsibilities are and ideally yeah. give yourself a number that's attached to that. So then it's not about you didn't do a good job. It's like my numbers are okay. So let me do my job. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. um, yeah. like definitely going, having a clear delineary and not, so the people in the office as well know that they can't bounce each, you off each other. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like that you're, yeah. you're going for you for this, Sonia for that. And that's, that's the difference. Yeah. So I, th I think, I think, and, and that, avoid, that avoids a lot of argument. That avoids a lot of arguments. And some of those, like if you do, and occasionally you will cross over and they can be quite, it can be quite bitter because you're very passionate about your business. And sometimes that can spill over, spill over to taking that home. So you want to avoid that at all costs. At all costs. Um, um, I mean, it was an interesting. It was an interesting question. Look, I, 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 we've got a, we've got a really, we've always had a really good relationship. Amazing. Um, so the whole thing about don't take work home, I, we haven't really looked at it that way. We've actually looked at it the other way, and the fact that as a business we've got a real advantage, right? Because we're other partnerships and other businesses. They're in the office. They talk about. They talk about stuff and then they go home and they talk to their partners and their partners don't know what they're, what they're on about. We've got an advantage where we can, we can go home and we can go, hey, you know, that's coming through. I mean, you know, I don't think we should be doing that. Or, and we can have those conversations. Yeah. And um, we can get back to the office the next morning. We're already ahead of the game. Yeah. So uh, I, 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 we, don't have any, we don't have this way of we don't try and break it down. We, it, we, we see it as it's all life. Right. Um, and yeah, it's all life. And, and it's about how you manage life. It's not about how you, you compartmentalize um, one part of your life and, and another part of your life. We just, we just, we just rock and roll the whole thing. Yeah, which is exactly the reason I called this podcast Agency Life, because it is a life. It's not a job. It's not a nine to five. It is a way of being that we've all chosen to be a part of, you know, in various different forms. Um, and, and another tip while we're at it is something that you mentioned about a personal tip to help you with the effectiveness that I'd love us to share with, uh, with everyone before we do a, a final wrap up, but is about getting into the office early before everyone else. Can you tell me a little bit about how that's working for you? Yeah, look, we're, I mean, we're fortunate and I guess there's a lot of agency owners out there might be in the same situation. I mean, we live, we live in a really pretty place. Mm. Um, um, and uh, so we've put our office really close to our, our home. Um, nice. So we're we're a, yeah we're a five minute drive, and um, I like to be, because I need to be available for be, be available for other people during the day. I like to get in an hour to an hour and a half early, so I get in here at seven o'clock, um, and I get I get all my admin and stuff stuff nailed and out of the way, and, and then I leave and then I leave it, and then so that I am then available to for the time for the people the time for the people. To get to get them to encourage them and teach and 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 support them uh, as our our culture is great one of our culture um, our pillars is grow great people so we put a lot into um, training so we've got two hours training uh, a week for every every person in the agency Brilliant. Um, and then obviously we've got you know we're around the supporting them around their accounts and yeah. Incredible. I think you bring up a really important point and I, we want to leave today with a couple of tips for new agencies, but that's definitely one thing that I've seen good agency owners figure out pretty quickly. You will have a job role in the business, uh, you know, for, over a period of time. Maybe sales is something that you're going to get another person in and start to work with them and do more strategic sales or do the closing or whatever, or do the opening. But really setting out time in your day for the people. I mean, if you're back to back as an agency owner, and yes, in the beginning, you're going to be doing everything. You're going to be doing finances, HR, and the whole lot. But as you expand, if you don't leave buffer time, to talk to people, they feel like they're a nuisance and they are your business. Like it's a people's business. So that's a great tip. Like if you are like where you are, you're still tactical, you're delivering a sales number, but you're getting your work out of the way so you can be present and not be, uh, I'm too busy, uh, book an appointment because your people want you to be approachable. You know, it's, it's a really good one. Um, along with that piece of advice, Boyd, can you believe today, like agencies are starting out. Some of them have just purchased HubSpot. They're going to start on their inbound journey. 
like can you believe like they're still signing up there's payment yeah. links flying out the door for brand new agencies what would be some of your tips that you would give a brand new agency maybe they're in a traditional they're switching over or maybe they're a new husband and wife team sitting around a kitchen table and about to start their own initiative any advice you'd have for them um i i, I think i go back to when you <laughs> when we sat down in our first calls and and i was very skeptical and um, guarded, right? And you went, just get oh, on with I, it. I just can't remember any of that. <laughs> just get on with it, do it. And yeah. and I think I think I uh, hark back. You you that was sound advice. That we um, that we needed to. You need to do your research. You just sit down, do your research, make a plan for where you want to be, and then just just execute the plan. And 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 I would be. I don't think you should be like. I don't think you should have a foot in both camps is what I'm trying to say right. is don't go, Oh, we'll just hang on to doing that brochure business and we'll have a dabble in this inbound business. I mean, they're juxtaposed. Yeah. Um, you know, have a, have a plan about what you want your agency to be. And, and, and if it's an inbound agency and, and, and it's, and it jump in just, just you could, cause you, the, the thing that it'll kill you will be, will be that, half-assed approach right yeah, yeah exactly. the thing that'll get the thing that'll get you there is a solid plan to yeah. be somewhere else in three years and an understanding of what that looks like and then driving everything driving everything to go to, to where that is yeah, yeah going all in just doing your first campaign and just getting it done and not and not questioning yeah really wasn't it <laughs> you yeah. had a I when we first came on the call you had a look of PTSD about your face <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> about these early morning calls late night calls <laughs> whichever ones we were doing well Boyd I'm absolutely delighted for you guys I can't believe it's been five years and what an impressive result that you've had so far and for something's telling me the best is yet to come with you guys you're you've got bigger plans and we'll all stay tuned and and hear how they go for you so thank you for coming on agency life i really appreciate it thanks Clara. really enjoyed it no worries see you soon bye now